Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Arizona Cardinals. I'll see you again at halftime as we preview some of the action coming up on Sunday. But for now, it's Thursday Night Football. And on the call, as always, is Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We find ourselves at the home of the world's first retractable natural grass field as you get a look inside State Farm Stadium in Glendale. A moment ago, this Arizona crowd was on its feet. The defensive starters led by perennial All-Pro Patrick Peterson were introduced. And they've got a tough one on their hands as they'll square off with the Pittsburgh Steelers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Cardinal team as they get ready here. They come in riding high, just one loss in their last seven games. It's a very focused team, very disciplined. They've kept the penalties to a minimum, and they're winning football games. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, they have certainly got it rolling of late. Winners of six in a row. And it's simple. The more you win... Now problems right out of the gate. We're going to get a delay. Delay of game. Offense. They were already backed up. Now they're backed up further. I think they were being Still so first careful game. to make sure all assignments were covered that they end up running themselves out of time. to throw now in his own end zone. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And all the way to the 25 before he's hit and dropped. That one goes for 24 yards. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it though, if there's a chance for him to get the football, even though he was covered well, he somehow finds a way to get it. First down, he'll drop the throw. Goes underneath for Bell. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and it's a second down. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points score gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. <laughs> They'll drop the throw. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. Well, that's a throw he... And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And, you know, certainly a lot of football left to be played. We're not into December yet, but... Right now where we stand, they're first place in their division. Looking good, looking to be a threat come January. And let's think about what every team has in their goals, all right? Number one goal is what? Make the playoffs. 
Number two goal is win your division. Number three goal, and the biggest goal, I think, is to be the highest seed possible that you can be heading into the playoffs so that you can have as many home games as possible to try and get you to the Super Bowl. And right now fighting for every win possible to try to at least secure home field for the wild card and or divisional round. Now back to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll look to throw here. Being chased out left. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. And give him ten that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Could be four down territory, even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Let's go! He'll look to throw. That's a strong running. And he finds McDonald. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Goal line offense, something they've really been emphasizing in practice lately. Now they have a chance here to put all that hard work to use. Looking to throw. They'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. They'll set up a throw. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sacked back around the eight. Chandler Jones in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. So they're back at the seven now for third and goal. Let's go! Grand 38! Back to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands. Guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field. Steeler offense now ready to see what they can do here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. throw here. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Robert Kimdichi coming up the middle. Gets him there for a loss of about nine. And the Steelers on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and 15. They'll set up to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity.
They'll try and start this drive in the air. Eluding the pressure right. Man open left side is Brown. Illegal forward pass. Offense. That's a good chunk of yardage. It's going to be canceled out. And we always talk about hidden yardage in a game. That's going to count as that because now it doesn't go on the books, but now they have to make that up again, don't they? So the illegal forward pass also costs them a down, and now it's second and long. Ah! He'll drop the throw. And he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. Robert Kimdichie in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool the defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their... In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the All-Pro, Navarro Bowman. And he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. So a dangerous pass over the middle into zone coverage, and it bit him hard. And what's really difficult when you throw it in that direction and versus that zone, that means the linebackers have gotten to their spot, gotten their heads back around, and they can see the quarterback and everything in front of them. And they took big advantage of it, went the other direction. Excellent blocking and picked up a touchdown. After the pick six, they go right back to the air. He's going deep. He's got a man complete. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. Partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Let's go! White Nazi! White Nazi! Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Two minutes to go here in the first half. More from the desert after this. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Over the middle here to Brown. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And there's a man they call A.B., always a volume receiver. He gobbles up catches. Holds a number two and number four spots for most receptions in a season in NFL history. And in 2015... And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell, his second touchdown on the season. And the Steelers are able to strike for six. Brandon, my man, just one sentence for that one. Clinic. And that's what they've done. They lead the league in points per game this season, but it's been quick strike ability as we saw on that drive.
come out throwing here to start the drive. And an alley to run. And he's taken down inside the 30. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Back to throw now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Antonio Brown with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, Intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Well, partner, I think the defensive fellow's got the memo, and they decided to cover him on that play. Yeah, he's already up over 100 yards in this game. They tried a deep shot, couldn't get it. Yeah, when you've had that much success, finally, someone said, let's try and put a stop to it and put people on him. Escaping the pressure right, and he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Hassan Reddick, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up four. And the Steelers set to take the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Back to throw now on second and ten. Over the middle complete. That's Brown. Pass the 20. Ten. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown with his 13th touchdown of the year and second of the game. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, being on the second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half.
are going to look to throw. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. Chandler Jones in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. Might have hit a screen soon. He'll look to throw. And an alley to run. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Pretty nice gain on the scramble. Gets him 12 yards. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes him manageable now. They'll look to throw. He can run for it, and he will. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. So in the Cardinal territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. That is incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. Come on, let's go! Got his man complete over the middle. It's Brown. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Let's Double go. him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. His pass caught at the four. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Three yards is the game that time. Second and goal. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes. You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Over the middle complete. It's Brown. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. The Steelers on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. Flush to his right. And this is going to be incomplete. The pressure there was definitely enough to make him alter his throw because... If getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. You yeah. put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Super tough. <laughs> 
stepping up. He's going to keep it. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll look to throw now on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. The 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Well, to me, this leads to the question, do you admire the way he puts his body out there all the time, or do you think he should protect himself a little bit more? <laughs> well, he's been on the ground several times with all those sacks that he's taken. So, I don't know, I kind of admire him not sliding down there, don't you? I'm with you on that one. The meter definitely leans towards admiration. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting go. their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Steelers on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and nine. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Thanks. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. Well, at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. That one looks like he'll throw here. This is Bell on the dump off. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the interception by the Steeler D leads to a touchdown. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clencher, the proverbial icing on the cake. A 
big offensive explosion help leading them to victory and the defensive guys they're just saying hey put those points up every week we'll just keep winning they will gratefully accept them won't they it makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow so for the Steelers, they're setting themselves up as a major contender as they move to 8-1 and one now on the year. And they'll get a few extra days to savor this one before they take on the Cleveland Browns. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, the loss will drop them to 6-3 and three now on the year. And they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Carolina Panthers. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.